quickly, let me welcome Dr. Marav Ben David. I'll put my credibility glasses on so I don't mess up your intro. And I say that for a reason, I'm not just being cute. I mean, you really are a remarkably gifted academic, as well as it would seem a lot of those academics well applied to the state for which you'd like to be representative, and that's Wyoming. You got a PhD in wildlife management from the University of Alaska. You worked as a professor at the University of Wyoming. You've worked as a chairperson in the Department of Zoology and Physiology at the University of Wyoming. You were a wildlife researcher. You were the author of over 100 peer reviewed publication as a wildlife researcher and tour guide. And I mentioned these things and I've just skimmed it because when you think about Wyoming, you think about what a massive and and stunning natural resource Wyoming is for America. And I, along with many other Americans, worry very much for the future of Wyoming. And I know that's where you live and you're very worried about that future as well. So you bring that those eminent qualifications to this desire to represent Wyoming. And I welcome you to the conversation. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. And indeed, you're right, there was a very, a significant reason why I came to live in Wyoming. And it was the environment, it was access to public lands, to open spaces, clean water and air. I, I lived in Alaska for 10 years before I took the job here in Wyoming. And I made the decision to come here. I had other job offers in other states. But the main reason I came here is because we have snow on the ground for nine months of the year. and. I, my main sport that keeps me sane is skiing, skiing and ski drawing with dogs. So this is the place for me. Well, you know, you talk about public lands. I know that in many of the materials and many of the remarks that you've made publicly, you talk about how public land should remain public. And that's something that is threatened under this administration and other administrations. It's important for Wyoming to have strong representation, I would think, in that regard. That makes such common sense. But on the other hand, as I say, those lands are threatened. Yes, as we've seen with the current administration, they have shrunk the sizes of monuments, such as Bear Ears National Monument and Escalante National Monument, both of which are fantastic places that I've taken my students to before they were reduced in size. In fact, I have the last map of the original Bear Ears National Monument before they uh, you know, took away some of the protected lands. We cannot, um, we cannot allow development to threaten one of the main resources that we do have here in Wyoming. It's not just that we like it emotionally, it's a very important emotional resource, of course, but it's also the source of revenue for uh, our second largest industry, which is tourism. People come to Wyoming uh, 12 months of the year. Like me, they like the outdoors, like me, they like wildlife, like me, they like, you know, being able to ski and hunt and fish. So tourism is the second uh, largest industry we have. And with the first one declining so fast, especially this year, the fossil fuel industry, we need to make sure that we keep the resource that funds us um, intact. Well, how do you push back against such moneyed interests like the fuel, uh, the fossil fuel industry when it comes to uh, Wyoming and it comes to so many of these lands in the West that represent in their judgment and the judgment of many Americans who feel we want to be energy independent, you hear all of these things. Uh, how do you push back against uh, these these huge, as I say, uh, corporate and moneyed business interests? So I don't have to push back against anything. I am looking at what's happening to us without uh, any interference from actually what we do here in Wyoming. The global demand for coal, oil, and gas is declining. We are seeing it. We have seen it for decades. It's not anything new. I can't tell you how many budget cuts we've gone through here because of the reduced revenue from, from coal, especially. It's not anything that any Wyomingite says or claims or wants to push. This is happening. This is reality. My proposal or my vision is, okay, this is happening. We're gonna 
sit here and complain and drift away and fall off a cliff? Or are we going to uh, come up with a, an alternative plan? A plan that will work for us? Because a very common saying we have here is let's keep Wyoming, Wyoming. Uh, we have a certain character as a state and we want to keep it that way. A big part of it involves the outdoors and public lands. So the question is, how do we do this at a time where you know we are losing our main source of revenue? And there are a lot of options. There are a lot of options that we should be pursuing and uh, investing in that will create high paying jobs, stable, stable economy uh, here in Wyoming. Well, you know, I'm glad you touch on this because Dr. Ben David, in, in looking at those things that describe you and and your position papers and uh, in regard to those things that it, you've touched on, I'm talking about plans for the future. You're quite specific, which is which is impressive. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of the politicians with whom we, we hope you'll be serving alongside uh, uh, may you know speak in platitudes, but I don't know that there are a lot of specifics to to back up their quote plans. Uh, I remember reading about a plan you had, the three R's or something like that. I'm sorry, I don't have it quite on, but you maybe you know to which I'm referring this plan. It's quite specific in the road ahead that you plan for Wyoming. Right, so it's rescue, reimagine and rebuild. Oh, it is the three R's, okay. <laughs> the three I was, R's, I the rescue, okay. yeah, good memory. Yeah, rescue, reimagine and rebuild. And a big part of the reimagine is those relying on these new technologies, these new innovations that are, you know, I read about things every week, especially if you read the technology and, and scientific literature, that's what you see. The, the new proposals, new ideas. And what I try to do is find the ones that will fit Wyoming. So we have a lot of resources here, such as thorium, rare earth minerals, helium, that uh, we have some of the best deposits in North America. You know, we might need to leave coal and oil and gas in the ground, but that doesn't mean we have to leave the others in the ground. So I'm trying to find those technological innovations that will be uh, suited for Wyoming, that we have the resources for in Wyoming, and that we will be able to uh, use to pursue uh, a new economy. This is interesting because what I'm hearing and what you're saying is that there is a balance. Uh, there's a balance between those things that are associated with getting the resources out of the ground and taking advantage of natural resources that exist in Wyoming while also respecting the land and respecting that delicate balance within the land, the ecosystem. That's why I'm really drawn to your profile because I feel if anyone understands that balance, I'm talking about the ecological balance, the scientific delicate balance of nature there in Wyoming, it's you. So you're saying, yeah, you strike that balance in the uh, in the plan ahead in terms of using resources and taking care of those industries that still want to exist in Wyoming. Taking care of industries that will support Wyoming workers. Yes, definitely. We I I talk to so many people and they're losing their jobs, and that's the last thing we want to happen. And so my plan is to make sure that we make a just transition. And not only that, that we attract industries that will make sure that our young people stay here. Right now we are training, me included as a professor, we are uh, training our uh, human capital to be the best in the world. And then we don't offer them any opportunities here and they have to leave the state. In fact, we are the uh, uh, fastest aging state in the nation because our young people have nothing to do here and they have to leave. So it's all, you know, it all comes back to the same idea that we want to protect Wyoming. We want to make sure it's it has a thriving future, and we want to make sure that we take care of the people here. And that's my goal. Uh, give me the the brutal politics of the situation there. I mean, obviously we're getting to the end of the race, but I'm wondering uh, how is the money raised? Uh, what is the media exposure? What are they receptive to? What messages are they not so receptive to? Have you been able to get? Give us a sense of it. Have you been able to get? Uh, media spotlight shown on you? Yes, we we have had the media, especially lately. Uh, and we had a debate and the debate was very interesting. I recommend to people to go and look it up. Um, we get media attention mostly locally, very little uh, attention on nationally. Thank you for highlighting my race. We have been endorsed by the Biden 
by Joe Biden, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey. So a uh, campaign is getting national attention, maybe not from the media, but definitely from colleagues, which is great. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, also several environmental organizations have uh, endorsed us, the Sierra Club, Friends of the Earth. So we feel very, very good about that. Uh, the race is, is going good. You know, we have raised half a million dollars, all from grassroots, nothing from any uh, big donors. Uh, we ha- we are forcing the opponent, Cynthia Lummis, to spend money. She had to spend $2 million this last uh, month uh, because she's threatened. And this is a very, very red state. You know, people uh, think that we don't have a chance, but uh, I think we do. I want to encourage everyone to read more about you, Dr. Marav Ben David. And uh, you can see it at bendavid2020.com. It's Ben David, if you want to. I'm trying to give you the authentic Israeli uh, pronunciation. Uh, Bendavid2020.com. Uh, and you're at M. Ben David 2020 on Twitter, M Ben David 2020. Uh, I think you're incredibly qualified. It's one of the reasons I was excited about speaking with you, and I love your environmentalism. I love how you embrace science, and I wish you the very best. Thank you so much for spending time with us on the conversation. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store or at tyt.com slash podcasts.